Have you ever been shot before? Yes, several times. In 1994, I was shot up. That was that was really um, surprising to me because I thought I was untouchable. I didn't okay. think nobody had the heart or the balls to come in my pocket to shoot me. Where did you grow up at? In Girtown. On Pot and Olive, like about one minute from Hollywood where Lil Wayne grew up at. Okay. Did you have both of your parents in your household? At first I did, then later on it was just my mother. Okay, your mom. So I know everyone always asks you about your dad. I want to know more about your mom because we never hear anything about your mom. My mother was a hard working woman. She did what she could do for us. She always worked. She always made sure we had. You know, it was time that you know we didn't have a, a lot or uh, something to eat, but my mother never gave up. So you think it was pretty hard for your mom being a single parent? Of course. I can remember a time when we was living. We had just moved up to Calio Project, and we was living on a street called Johnson and Jackson in some little smaller part, one bedroom. And we only had uh, one bed. She would take the mattress off, put it on the floor for me and my two brothers to sleep on. Uh, we had an ice chest for a refrigerator. And to this day, that's why I don't eat string beans or, or cranberry because <laughs> we only had one can of string beans and cranberry. <laughs> and I made a vow. I never eat it again. So wait a minute. So yes. did y'all have to share that one can of string beans? Of course. My mother had three boys. I have a younger brother and an older brother. We lived on Pine and Olive in Girtown. Our house sat right behind a store called Warren's Store. It was Domino's, I mean. His name was Warren, it was called Domino's. And uh, we um we had a two-bedroom house. I know my I remember us having a dog named Duke. It was like an off-whitest dog. We had uh, 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 some chickens in the backyard. Uh, my grandfather used to uh, grow melaton. But um, in Girtown, uh, I went to Daniel Elementary School. From Daniel Elementary School, uh, my mother took us out of there, and we went. Then we started going to uh, Washington Private School. We said to catch this little yellow bus. Uh, wasn't a little crazy bus, now. It said yellow. Forgot the old man to come blow that horn early in the morning to come pick us up. So every time the Magnolia projects come up, I hear your name, Gangster. Why is that? Because I represent that Magnolia to the fullest. But I would like to say this, that I wasn't raised in the Magnolia Project. I was raised in Girtown, 17 Wall. Okay. But I got my name out the Magnolia. And um, I grew up in Lillesheim at the Baptist Church. Um, I think it's on Audible. I'm not sure what street it's on. But um, I remember one time being in church, man, my mother used to send to church all the time. Now she, sometimes she wouldn't go, but she would send us to church all the time. And uh, the preacher was getting it in, and he just fell down, and he went to jump, and then he on it, and I jumped out, the ch jumped up and ran out the church. I ran on mama, uh, Reverend Hall today. He died in the church, but he was. I later on will find out that he was. Uh, I had uh, the Holy Ghost, or uh, how they had a little thing in church, um, you know. So um, after that, you know, I got in the Sunbeam Choir, uh, going to church a lot. So what age was you when you first started getting into trouble? Okay, the first time I went to where well, the police put me in the car was at nine years old. I had a cousin live next door. You know, he was the only child. He had a nice big pretty house. That's when Atari and um um uh, uh in television. A lot of people a lot of y'all don't know about that. Google that there was a game called In Television. That uh Atari and um then I think Nintendo came out right after that, but those games were out. And um, we used to go over to his house and play his games. So one day I got the bright idea with school time. Everybody was going to work, whatever. And um, I go around on the other side of the house, got in the window, just, just stole his game. 
and on my way out the window, the people on the other side of the house, like like my house set here, his house set here, and there's a house over here. So I went around this alley over this way to go in the house. The people over here saw me, and they called the police. They ratted me out because I used to beat the little boy up that stayed at that house. So uh, the police came to my uh, elementary school, man. They put me in the back of the car. I never forget My mother came. Um, that was my first time being in a, car, in a police car back then um, for breaking in my um, relative house. Then I met this guy named Willis, big young boy in um, in Gertown. He lived like right down the block, right down the street from us. Him and his uh, cousin named was Chinese. They was the first two to bring me to uh, A&P on Carrollton Avenue to steal. That's when I first learned how to steal. I stole this little Hot Wheel car. The little car you take the little uh, tires off. And we, we, we went back in the hood, right? And we go to this guy named... Uh, Freddie Crosby, he was like a little neighborhood, little bully. So we knock on the door, I'm wondering why Willis wanna to go to his house, cause I don't wanna to go to Freddie's house, cause I know Freddie gonna to wanna to try to take my car. So he knock on the door, wanna show off our little cars to Freddie, Freddie get my car. So he's playing all on side the house, zone, making all of that noise. And he playing on my car too long, I'm like, well, we're gonna get my car back now. So I'm like, all right, he like, I said, all right, get my car. He's like, all right, hold on, he said, so in my mind, I'm like, man, I'm not about to let this man jack me for my car. It's gonna go down, we about to rumble. So Big Willis, uh, say, Fred, come let me talk to you. So he said, uh, get a little T the car. So he gave him a call. And and when they go on side of the house to talk, I just took out running. I just ran home. Because I, I be honest with you, I wouldn't I ain't never had a fight in my life. I was young and I wasn't about to fight, but I wasn't about to let him keep my car. So that's why I just took off and ran home. Um and then uh from there me and my little cousin June June, we would uh I brought him uh on Carrollton Avenue to, to it was an A and P, then it was a place called Security where they sold cleats and all that kind of stuff. And we went in there and stole all kind of cleats and stuff. And I put it in my godfather uh, closet, thinking that he gonna stumble up and say, "Oh, I found some cleats and give them to me." Man, the man called my mother and snitched me out. And my mother whooped me. She whooped me with a stingy car. I whooped me in the tub naked. So um, yeah. I had a cousin live next door. You know, he was the only child. He had a nice, big, pretty house. That's when Atari and um, um, uh, uh, Intellivision, a lot of people, a lot of y'all don't know about that. Google it. There was a game called Intellivision that came out back then. That, uh, Atari, and um, then I think Nintendo came out right after that. But those games were out. And um, we used to go over to his house and play his games. So one day I got the bright idea. It was school time. Everybody was going to work, whatever. And then uh, my brother... Chris, oh man, uh, my first time coming in contact with a female was uh, Chris' girlfriend. He had her over, and then he just came out on the porch and was like, shop open, and he screamed that, and all his homeboys, Pat, Santana, Run, Big On, Mike, all of them come running up the alley and come at my mother's house. I said, oh, I'm telling mom. So uh, Pat gave me a dollar, like, yeah, boy, and go get Big On. So they went got Big On. So I come back, I'm in there looking, and they're like, you want something? Yeah. So they had me get on the bed, and they tell me, pull my pants, I was scared, because I'm like, I'm not about to get naked, and y'all behind me looking at me. So I canceled that. Um, then we went to the bathroom, the girl did stuff to me, my homeboy, ugly, I never forget that. Um, yeah, she uh, did all kind of little stuff. That was my first time coming in contact with a, 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 you know, a little older female, which was my brother's girlfriend. And um, from there, man, Mosquito, my best friend Mosquito, who was killed in the Calio Project, when him and I um, went to Second and Dineal, we was introduced to Second and Dineal. The reason why I haven't, I'm, I'm not gonna go into too much detail of how Mosquito and I met because we worked on the original Hot Boys movie and I don't wanna give up too much here. So uh, him and I, so that's why I'm fast forward, him and I, um, we went on. We went on second to Daniel with, with an older friend of ours, and um, we started selling weed, two dollar weed. And a mosquito uh, decided he wanted to graduate, so he started selling crack. And I was scared. I went. I didn't want to do that yet. So we had a bottle. We had a little twenty-two. I come around the corner one time, and he, the guy, I told the guy choking him, trying to take the crack from him. I shot in the air. The guy, they both jumped. Look, so mosquito was able to get out, get out his grips, and we walked off. And um. Another guy tried to jack Mosquito out of his crack, and this guy got shot in the leg. Um, so Sterling, one of the original high boys that deceased, he came looking for us. Um, that's a long story, too. That story's going to be an original high boy movie. So uh, 
Mosquito and I was already hanging. So Sterling was looking for us for the beef with us. Um, I met Dooney, the original hot boy, in juvenile jail. Um, that's how the original hot boys came about because we got the movie coming out. That's what made me flash back to that. But um, I had started hanging around uh, second and Daniel. And uh, I met the guy named George uh, G. Bunny. He's in Angola right now um, for a murder. Him and my best friend Mike Bunny for a murder. They didn't even commit. But uh, I met them. I met George around there. And uh, he just steal cars a lot. It's a lot of steal them cars. So he had shown me this beautiful Bergen uh, uh, 98. He had a 90, it was a 98. Uh, but this is like back in, I want to say this is like 88, 89 somewhere. And uh, yeah, because that's when we used, to, uh, we used to be out there this blue mailbox. And uh, we used to be playing F the Police by NWA. And the police would come around and they take our tape, throw it in the uh, mailbox. Uh, we used to make us take all our jaws, our shoes off. And I was the smallest one, so they would make me grab all the shoes and throw them in the window. This abandoned house. Um, you know, so yeah, yeah, we used to be right there setting all that weed. And George bought me by this car he had stolen. And he had told he had stole the car, so he was like, later on the night we're gonna go ride. I was like, all right. So I said, well, I'm about to go home, take a bath and get dressed and come back. So I go down the block, two blocks, turn the corner, and I went to the car. Cause now I was like, I wanna see if I could drive myself. I don't wanna drive with him. I'm about to steal a car from him. So I got in the car, man, I started it up, man, I took off, turned the curve and speed a little bit and turn. And I, I remember I remember driving on Jackson Street. Like it's a two-way lane. I was in this lane. The car blocked. Like, Why the car's coming towards me like that? So I had to swerve over and I curved. Went around my buddy's ugly house, and um, I finally go around on Josephine Street. And when I got around Josephine and Liberty, oh, it's that LaSalle, one of those streets. And it's a two-way street, but you know you had the cars parked on the side, so I was kind of nervous as the car coming. So now I had to stop, and the car wanted me to back up. And this is my first time driving. So I put the car in reverse and stepped on the gas. Man, I wound up in somebody's living room. When I, I jumped out the window, though, because the back of the car was in the living room, so the front of it, I was able to get out the window and run. And the little boy, who the whole house it was for, he tried to catch me, fake him out, ran home. Um, I met up with George and this girl there, LaDonna. Uh, later on that night, they was going to steal another car. I thought George would be mad and want to beat me up because he was a little bigger than I was. But uh, he let, he wasn't even us tripping. We was going. We went and found another car and stole another car that night. From there, man, I just started hanging out. Um, it just got worse and worse. Um, because my mother, she would go to work like five in the morning, so we would be sleeping in the car, and she'd get up, bang on the window. Y'all better get the car from my door. I'm gonna call the police on y'all. So we'd be like, oh man, it's time to get up. School time. So that's how we knew to go around. Uh, this it was this uh, Korean lady, uh, Asian lady. Uh, uh, named Nancy. She had a store on, for, on Washington and Ferret. And um, they were the donuts and put it on this little, you know, the, the newspaper thing you had back, this little blue thing where you get to, you put the dollar in there, you open the thing, you grab the newspaper out. Well, they would set her donuts on top of that and we would go around and steal her donuts. Um, or sometimes if, if the donut's not there, we'll go across Shakespeare Park to this other store and we had to pull the fence and grab the box of donuts out of there. That was our breakfast. Um, so, uh, I just thought getting in a lot of trouble. So my homie Patrick Bridges, who's a little, who's a little older than I was, um, he used to, he brought me down to this park to play football. So I guess he called himself trying to get me out the neighborhood, to try to, to calm me down, or whatever. So I start, I, I took a liking to the football. I started I played for Taylor Park. Um, I played on the same team with uh, Patrick Sertain. He went up going to the pros playing for Miami Dolphins. Uh, I played on a team with Randy Livingston. I played on a team with Walter Burton, Wawa. Um, I got a chance to play with some 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 guys that wind up going to play with NBA and NFL. So sometimes he said to myself, man, I could have played, but then I think back then, uh, you know, I was like five nine. I ain't no way I could be on that field. There was some big boys back then. Now them, them little players, they getting on, they weaving, they doing anything. But uh, back then it was it was kind of hard to do that. So needed to say, I hit the streets. I hit the streets running. So um, I just start selling the weed and. Then I started robbing people, toting guns. I just started getting into the wildlife. Just didn't want to listen. My mother tried everything she could. She whooped me with the board. Or come to the school and threaten to whoop me. All that stuff didn't work. So my mind it was just set on doing what I want to do. You know. So uh, it would be times like if she couldn't. Um, 
afford to get me the polo shirt, I was going to steal it. Like one time we was set to go to this party and I had to meet her on Canal Street and I got bored waiting on her to come out the job. So I went across the street to the uh, Canal place where they got the polo and all that. Now I went there and stole some polo socks and they caught me. I called my mother, my mother come over. She paid for the socks. And my mother gave the socks away to some of the boy and his mother was, I was so mad with her. Like, I would rather you whoop me and let me keep the socks than you get a socks to somebody that's walking by. So, uh, yeah, she did that. She gave them socks away, man. Mama love, down bad for that. But, um, so, as the years went on, man, I started, we, I went to, I went to, uh, my first elementary school was McDonald 36, was on Jackson between Red Street and Robinson. And um, I remember getting kept. I remember I got kept. I had, I got held back in fifth grade. I didn't want to do nothing. I used to be bad. I didn't want to learn in school. I, I got held back in fifth grade. But uh, yeah. So we went. To, I went to that elementary school. And when I finally made it out of that elementary school, I went to uh, Carter G. Wilson. Um, that had started from sixth grade, from six to nine, six to eighth grade. Yeah, six to eight because they changed. And Booker T. Washington went from ninth grade to twelfth grade. So I was at Woodson. And from Wilson, man, that's when things start really heating up, man. Because now, you know, you got a, the Polos uh, or the Jordans, you know. So, uh, I mean, to be Mosquito, Hank, myself, and another uh, guy that we come up with. We would go to Macy's. Uh, one, of, one of the guys would get four Polo shirts. Uh, like, I might get uh, four pair of Jabot jeans. Uh, the other one would get uh, four jackets. The other one will get, Hank might get four pair of socks, and we all just run out the store. We run out the store, uh, run past the, uh, the Superdome, and they had these little steps. We'd go through the little steps, go over, and head on home. Mosquito mother house was first, but his mother didn't play. His mother was, was one of the ones, she would, whoop, she would tear him up. So we, by my mother being at work, we would go to my mother house, and we would get dressed there, and then we would go around the school, you know, all flying fresh with all the 22 on us, shoot the air, run everybody from school or whatever. And, um, what was the most embarrassing moment in high school? Oh, uh, not, well, I didn't have one in high school, but I would say middle school, like what people say, like junior high or middle school. Okay. Um, back in the days, we had uh, Popeyes. We would get these little ashtrays. Popeye had these little aluminum ashtrays, but they were gold plated. And uh, we would cut the inside out and make our little gold teats. So, you know, back then, if you had gold in your mouth, the girls was crazy about you. So I had made me four golds one day, man. My mother had bought me, it was, she had bought me, or my, my mother wound up getting us a Christmas, uh, our Christmas gifts early. That's one thing you don't do in a black household. You don't get the gifts early, uh, parents. So I, she had the, the, the gifts under the tree. Uh, I went there feeling all alone. I was like, oh, this kind of soft. So I took the tape off, pulled the box. It was a blue and gray polo. I was like, oh. So I put the polo on. I had my little blue polo uh, uh, jogging pants. My, uh, I'll never forget that I had some blue and white Delta uh, Nikes. So I got my little fake four goals in my mouth, man. I go around in the school. It's lunchtime. I got four girls surrounding me. I'm talking about back then. We be like, oh, she on my jock. Yeah, the girl jocking me. So, man, I got the girl all in my face. Man, I'm talking to these girls because they can't tell that they was fake. And it was this black girl, man. She had a Jerry curl. I still could see her face now, man. She just was, she was, I should have, I don't know what, because she was just staring at me. She was just stuck on my mouth. And I'm talking, I'm popping to these other girls. This girl just took her hand and put it on my mouth, man, hit my teeth. And that thing hit the ground. And I looked. Oh, man, I just took out running because all the girls, they just started laughing, man. That was an embarrassing moment for me in school. Yeah, she just, I don't know what was wrong with this girl, man. She messed my grill up, man, put her hand in. She got me busted. People knew I had the fake goals then. So, uh, well, that still ain't stopped me. <clears throat> Excuse me. That still ain't stopped my flow, you know, because um, I was a little smooth little guy. You know, I kept fresh polo, fresh bowls, bellies, and things of that nature. So, um, now... When I finally, now I know some of y'all might be like, nah, he wrong for this. Now, when I finally got the two goals in my mouth, I, oh, I got to tell y'all this story. Hold on. Let me get comfortable here. Now, when I first uh, got my, my real, the TNW in my mouth, 
I had broken my best friend. I'm not gonna say his name because his brother, because it's something his brother did me, and I don't wanna put it out there, you know, because his brother they all still alive to this day. Well, um, his brother used to used to sell drugs. And uh, man, we used to do some stuff. Down, and as I got older, I realized that we could have gotten this man killed because he used to hide his stash out in like in a little shed, like in the backyard, in his in some old ballet shoes and a like sock. And we would take a Tylenol crack because they sell powder bags back in the day. We would crush the Tylenol up, uh, take one of his powder bags, put the Tylenol in the thing to wrap it up and put it with his other drugs. And we would go hit this little crackhead named Penitentiary Black. She was a little short. She was older, but she was our height. We used to get her in an alley, hump her. So um, one day, man, one of my homies had uh, got into a guy. Um, we was fresh out of uh, school, middle school. He killed the guy. So they put my best friend, I almost said his name. <coughs> Excuse me. They, so they put my best friend in the car. So I was around the corner on my way around there by the scene to see what's going on. So my best friend, older brother, was coming up the news ground when he found out that his brother was in a car. He had told the police, oh, get him to, get him to, because my other brother in the car, that he was with him. I'm like, what the world going on? Did he really did? So the police put me in the back seat of the car. We go around the corner and they had witness. I said, nah, that wasn't them two little boys. They didn't do that. They let us out. So I'm like, man. Wow, you know, this is a guy who hustled and selling drugs that I had respect for, do me like that. That was strike one. Now that the second time he did some goofy stuff, we in the house, we in we in my best friend's house, and he got this girl that went to school with us, this petite little red girl. So uh, we got over the house, so all of us on top of you know dry clothes rolling and all that old stuff. So I bring her in the back. I was like, Are "You ready? For, you ready for the real deal?" So she was like, "Yeah." So I always oh, about to go down. Now that I think about it, man, we was laying, on, we was laying on the on the floor of the bathroom, the tub right here, the toilet facing up here. We were wild, we were young. So uh, she tell me she ready to go all the way. So as we getting ready to go all the way, oh, bang, 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 bang. What y'all throwing in there? Who in here? So I'm like, oh man, it's me in here, and I got the girl. So I'm thinking he an older guy. You know, he not old. You know, he's a little older than me, like a few years older than me. But he in the streets, he hustling. So I'm thinking he gonna be like, oh boy, you young, you know, you you got you a girl in here, y'all do y'all get out of here, get out of my mind while he put us out. So I'm like, man, what's up with this guy, man? He put put me in the police car, he ran the girl out the house, man. So their grandfather passed. When their grandfather passed, I went over to the house that night, went in his sister window, went in the bedroom, and I stole his cocaine and I stole his money. Went home, I contact my, 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 my uh, homeboy, Chill Wheel. Cause Chill Wheel's little older than Chill Wheel had the, the uh, two goals in front of him. He had the little, back in the day, they had these uh, these three different bikes. You had the Elite 80, I mean, you had the Spree 80, you had the Elite 125, and I think the Elite 250. That's the one that had the foot brake, the 250. I, mean, I think the 125, too. but anyway, uh, he had the little 80, he had the little black one. So we would ride around on that. So. I give him the coke and I and I and I kept the money. It was like it was like maybe a thousand dollars back then. It was like maybe a thousand dollars. So I went and got my T and a W in my mouth. So I come home, my mother thinking I'm faking because I stay out late. And when I come home, my mother threatened to whip me so high. And I knew what her weakness was. Her weakness was a uh, Coca Cola, and she used to love those cupcakes. So before I go home, I would go to the store. Uh, it'd be like eleven o'clock at night. I would go to the store, get the Coca Cola, get the cupcakes. Boy, will you be able to whoop your butt right here, mom? Boy, thank you. But I'm gonna still whoop your butt. Yeah, I'm good now. So I go on the road, whatever. So um, this particular night when I bought her, her, her soda and cupcake, I was talking to her. She's like, "Boy, that face about your mom." I said, "Nah, mom, it's real." You lying? She grabbed my mouth, trying to take it up. Mom, you doing this stuff real? So <clears throat> my best friend, brother, came straight to my house that night. You been around my house? I said, "No." This before I got to go. He come there that night. You been around my? No, I ain't been there. I. Right. He go check his friend. So, a few days later, I get the T and the W in my mouth. He like, he catch me around the school. At this time, I got a 38 on me. It was me, some other guy I was cutting school this day. I didn't want to go to school. So, he was right. He was like, man, if I find out you broke in my house, I said, man, chill, we bought me these gold. I said, so he said, if I find out you broke in my house, 
I'm going to take the ball and I'm going to knock your teeth out your mouth. No, no, no. He said, I'm going to knock your teeth out your mouth. He said, if I find out my, if it's my uh, friend who I think it is, I'm going to whoop him with a ball. So in my mind, I'm saying to myself, man, I can't let him knock my teeth out my mouth, man. I got a two in the front. I'm a, I'm a little, the, the popular in the school now. Cause ain't too many people got the, the gold in their mouth. Um, Mosquito was one of the first ones in my school. He got a little solid um, on the side of his mouth. <laughs> Yo, he had me ticked off. I'm, I'll tell you about that for the Hot Boy movie. But, uh, yeah, so he was threatening me, and I was like, man, he don't knock a 38 on me. Man, I could pop him now. But then I thought if I pop him, he got a cousin that's a cold gangster that it might be some uh, retaliation. I wasn't ready for that kind of stuff. So I just let him talk and, and told him I didn't do it. Well, blah, blah, blah. I kept saying that kind of stuff. Let me get a little more comfortable to you all. So, um, as I did, I told him I, I didn't do it at the Beepers. I set them down. Um, yeah, I told him I didn't do it. You know, got the quarter if I need to make a call to pay for them. But now I got this now, so I don't really need the quarter no more. Back in the industry, you had to pay for pay for on court. So where was I? Um, so I, I was just be calm, you know, let him talk, blah, blah, blah. He left. Uh, then I didn't have to worry about him no more. So um, as Chill Will and I started hanging in the Magnolia Project and on um, Washington Avenue, that's where my best friend Hank, mother, lived on Washington Avenue. Chill Will was set a little crack. Excuse me. I started um, being a lookout man. Back then, they used to pay the lookout man. Some spots, $25, some spots. Up to $50 to be the heads up man, I was called. So when the police come, the heads up, I mean, everybody gets the scattering. The guys around Josephine had started that, doing that, um, doing that little thing. So anyway, we would hang out um, on Washington and Ferret. Hank mothers live right there on right on Washington Avenue, so we had a house to duck off in it. Chia Will Auntie lived in the project on Washington and Ferret. Um, so one day we was hanging out, you know, uh, kind of like a, a bluish car pulled up. I know a Taurus with the white guts inside. Um, you no, know, my brother on my father's side pulled up. And you know, as Chia Will and I, I had so hanging in the Magnolia project um, back in. Uh, and on um, Washington and Avenue, that's where my best friend Hank put mother lived nice on Washington fly. Avenue. Was like, she was like, man, I look crack. So, on, so I was like, all right. So later on that night, he pulled up. I started um, being a lookout man. I did, Back then, he paid attention, lookout, so I man. jumped to the front seat. Some spots, $25, some spots. And it was spots. a person in the back be the heads up, man, I was called. And so when the police come, the heads up, I mean, everybody was scattering. Around, that know, guys around Josephine had started that, doing school. that. Um, it's like a little dog street on Robinson Street. Doing that little thing. So um, anyway, we, around there, we would hang out gun back my head. on Washington and like, Ferret. He was like, yeah, see, I'm teaching you Hank's mother lived right there on, right on Washington yeah. Avenue, so we had a house to duck off. She will auntie lived in the project um, on Washington and Ferret. Um, so one day we were hanging out. I was hanging kind out, of puzzled. I was like, why would he have this person like a gun in the back of my head? Blue his car. Pull so, up a Taurus, the person with the white guts inside was a female. Um, no, my she's brother. She's to this day, but um, on my father's side, someone had robbed her. And, um, and he was the same brother that I had he seen. He wanted me um, to back shoot in, uh, in the eighties. So that came me around the set. He pulled up the ice and fly and, and struck like, man, I need to holler at you, you know. So later on, so I was like, to do. So and come later on that night, pull up, I'm gonna pick you up. This and this, and but he was teaching me. I didn't, you never pay let, attention, so I jumped in the front never seat. Never get in the front seat and let and it was sit behind you in the back seat. Person in the back seat. Or, um, and we came drove me. off. When we got around that night, I went home. From, uh, I know you all went out. What happened? Six do it. Uh, it's like a little dog street on Robinson Street. So, anyway, uh, um, when we got around there, the person put a gun in the back. After word got to my other brother, he was like, he was like yeah, that I was scary, that I was getting groomed, that I was already in the streets. When he said, I'm teaching you a lesson. He came and picked me up. The taller one came and picked me up with a white guy in the car. I was kind of puzzled. I was like, why would he have this person put a gun in the back of my head? You know. Later on, I, I would later so, on find out that there was this person an insurance on, man. was a female. I signed some papers. She's deceased to this day. This day, white you know? guy was giving... Someone had robbed her. And my brother's he drugs. He wanted me 
to shoot. I guess I was the, the insurance so for it. You mess around the set, that. pointed the guy out. You got to know who a phantom and what the case may be. So um, how that sounds done, what do. I didn't know I was young. And come to run around to this corner. Just hit you up, you know, old brothers this. come and get me. Well, he was teaching up to me. I'm thinking, never let me, me. Uh, never get in the front me. seat. Or why they use it behind me. Back seat. Oh, you know, know that um, back then. So, you know, he came and got me, you know. Um, that night I went home. You know, I signed the papers. You all wondering, what happened? Did you do it? So, anyway, I used to hide a lot of the stuff under my After word got to my other brother, like my mother house was a stash house. She was scary that I was getting home, then. that I was already in the streets. And, um, but I still was, he came and picked me up. The taller one came and picked me up. The white guy in the car. Be in the streets, so I would later uh, go and um, later on, I, I would later on find out me. that there was a special insurance man. I signed No, I do not work with Terrence Williams white guy at all. That is old. Man. Yeah, my brother's from drugs. <laughs> yes, I was the, the insurance for me. No, no. Drugs, hey, what? It's Terrence Gangster Wade, a.k.a. OG Giddy, a.k.a. Mr. Answer, right back, a.k.a. The People's Champ, a.k.a. Terrence of Eating Weaves. Pastor. You know, old brothers come Pastor. Pastor. Me, looking up to me, I'm thinking. You get the Lame of the, lame of the Year Award. You depend on me. You sent your brought upon my camp. Um, I didn't know that back then. To get you a new bag. So you get you a new chair to roll around and get you a bag of pampers. You know, I signed the papers, got the drugs. But you failed. She ran so fast, she left the bag. I used to hide. She left the bag, Pastor. I had to live like my mother's house was a stash. Well, now you're going down, Pastor. The congregation not going to like this. She missed a big bag. Mm-mm-mm. Being impatient. So guess what? I'm just going to let the world see her free. Because listen, y'all. Go this first part of my uh, documentary, you know, Jazz and Show, y'all, I had contact 50. And 50 and I was talking. I was explaining to him that if I could hook up with him, I can get better production, better stuff going for my documentary. Proud of me is word get to OG tight pocket. And when word get to him, everything got shut down because there's some ancient China secrets that they don't want out. But my business partner... Overreact, got mad, got upset. Why don't you just set it to the whole calm down? I understand you owe a lot of money. Just chill. We're going to get that. They, they tap into my beat now. Be patient. But couldn't. Woke up one morning, ain't take that medication. Delusional, deranged. Ha! Ah, I hate you so much right now. That girl, Khalees. And just bailed. Left the bag. Now, Pastor, now you got to try to get you something else. But you know what they always say, y'all? Before I sign out, always remember this. Bell Beef the Bull said it best. You can't trust a big button to smile. 